is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. <laughs> All right, folks, what's good? Uh, new episode, Ain't No Seeds Podcast, and we have made it. Doesn't feel real. Me and AB, we were just talking about this. Does not feel like football season is here, but come Friday night, 7 o'clock, the Lance Leipold led Kansas Jayhawks head into. Would you guys say the most hyped KU football season since 2000, what, since Todd Reesing's senior year that really did not go planned at all, but we won't talk about that. Is this the most hyped and I guess most excited you've been for a KU football season? Um, whoever wants it can take it. Yeah, absolutely. I think obviously last year, going into last year, um, people had seen some hope from Leipold's first year at the end of the year when they were competing. So people... People were just excited um, to see if that momentum would keep rolling. But now that you've proven you can compete with some of the better schools in the league, um, they obviously went to a bowl game, started 5-0. and We know all the success they had last year and college game day and all that. So, yeah, it just seems real. And obviously a ton of productions back. They have some of the most production back in the country. And I think the most production on offense back in the entire country. So, it has to be the most excited I've been. It has to be the most anticipated KU football season since, like you said, the Todd Reasing era. Yeah, and A.B., we've kind of talked about, obviously there's hype, but I've kind of said now it's, and I even said this last year, now it's kind of scary too because you used to go in with low expectations. If you compete, you're happy, and now it's like, we got to make a bowl game. Like I feel like that's a fair expectation. We need to make a bowl game. That's how I feel, and we'll talk more about our expectations, our predictions, things like that. But, like, it's most hype, but are you maybe the most nervous you've been about a football season in a while, too? Yeah, it's it's a weird thing going on inside of me. Like, I should be the most excited I've ever been with KU football, but it's, like, a different level of excitement because usually we're counting down the days until we're shotgunning against each other in the lot and tailgating for six hours every Saturday. That's what we're juiced for. Now it's like we actually have football to pay attention to and it's not and you know, we don't feel obliged to go in, and watch a quarter, watch a half, and then go home and the man stays the tailgate. So it's like it's almost I hate to say it, like the least excited I've been for an opener, but it has nothing to do with the team because I know when I see them they're gonna be good and then I'm gonna get like rejuiced about the football side. I think I just need to see it first. We're coming off the hottest week I've ever been a part of in my entire life. It doesn't feel like it's football season. And then I look at the calendar and it's four days away. So I think I just need to see it. I don't know about you guys, but it just doesn't quite feel like football season yet on top of having actual football expectations. And it's in my mind, feel like Annie Ann, baby. I don't know what to do. I'm all pretzled up. Just wait. The first hype video they put out where Jalen Daniels at some point yells new era and it's going to be a great, great song behind it. Oh, That'll get you going. We'll be ready. Well, but I'm sure. I agree. It is a different excitement. It, it used to be an excitement of, uh, I don't know, kind of like you said, hey, it's fun. It's fall. We get to hang out with our friends. We get a drink. And now it's like excitement. But also there's nerves just like there is heading into like a, a big KU basketball game in Allen Fieldhouse. You're excited, but you're also nervous. And it's it's But it's amazing to feel that for football because it's just not something we've really felt other than the final – yeah, six, seven weeks of last season. But um, so I think what we want to do, and B-Turn, you can add more thoughts if you have them, but I think what our plan for this episode is today is we kind of just want to go through some best case scenarios. We each kind of brought our own best case, and they may be similar. Uh, we got a worst case scenario because that's always on the table. And then we got uh, some bold predictions or, or, or just any takes you want to rattle off that, that you think maybe – not everyone's going to be expecting or, or something you want to predict. So um, before we get into that, B-Turn, did you have anything else? No, I just, I kind of agree. It, it's kind of weird that football season is literally, I mean, it is here. Week zero just happened. It doesn't feel like we're four days away from playing or like probably three days away from playing once people hear this. Um, yeah, it does. It does feel weird. I was kind of going to ask because I kind of feel the same way as AV. Like I don't feel as excited as most years and it's weird because we've been so shitty for a while so maybe do you think it's to a point where maybe we just feel really I know it's early in the pro, early in their careers at KU but do we feel really comfortable and kind of not content because there's more to do or does it have to do with 
us three gentlemen getting older. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, if you want to have a therapy session about yeah. little, that, I am about the fact that for some reason, as I get older, my love and obsession for sports tends to go down. That's a, that's an episode for another day. We're going to need, like I said, a licensed therapist on the line for that one. But uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's a, I really don't think it's a getting older thing. I think it truly is like, it's a feeling we haven't felt in so long. It, it really is a different type of excitement like AB laid out. Um, but no, I'm also not content at all. And I think yeah. part of the reason I'm, I'm not like just so amped is because I'm also terrified. I'm very scared that, and it, and I, I, I promised myself I wouldn't do this on today's episode, but like there is still that KU football that is ingrained into our brains of, oh, they're going to disappoint me again. They're going to disappoint me again. And I really don't think that's going to be this team. I really don't. Yeah. But I do think it affects our, our brains, even if we try really hard not to. But I think like AB said, the second you see, see Jalen Daniels sling a ball Friday night and Andy Kotelnicki drop something absolutely sick uh i think we will all feel really good about where this program's at and we'll get really excited for what's to come yeah because i mean i keep telling myself that i'm not going to be nervous friday night like this this coaching staff's great we're going to be ready to go they're going to take care of business but i guarantee you when i pull up to the booth see the stadium the nerves are going to hit and i'm going to start having weird thoughts like what if this game's competitive but honestly in the past you like with all those teams that were so bad, you never knew what you were going to get. So I guess that kind of was exciting. Like, <laughs> and, and let's be honest, we talked ourselves in every season that we were going to find a way to like turn it around. Not that we'd make a bowl game, but it was like, oh my God, four wins this year. Les Miles, see him on the recruiting trail. Yeah, I was we have talk- a documentary on ESPN, four wins. Hey, I was sick though. I was talking the other night about when, um, obviously, we lost to Coastal 12-7, but then we go to BC and Khalil Herbert and um, Puka just went nuts, and they end up beating BC, and we were like 21-point dogs. And going forward, I was like, holy shit, we have a legit coach, and we're legit again. And then, uh, obviously, it wasn't the case. And then beating Tech, and then we had K-State the next week. And then Khalil Herbert walked in and said, I'm leaving. I will (laughs) never get over the fact that we have that Boston College game, and uh, Khalil Herbert was then just like, hey, you know, that was awesome. I'm going to leave. Wild. But it worked out for the guy. Um, okay, I guess before we get into best case, worst case, all that, what is, like, what is your expectation for this Friday? Because that's another thing, you know, years and years it's been, let's just win. Let's win on Friday. Let's win on opening day. I don't care how we do it. Let's win. I think last year we all agreed, like, okay, let's actually dominate a football game. I think I remember saying that. Like, let's go in and look like a team that's truly the Big 12 team versus the not even close, the FCS school. Like, but what do we, I mean, do we need to win by 40 to feel good? Do we need to win by 20? Do we need to? There's no score that's going to make me feel good. Like, I don't think it's like there's, I mean, I'll feel great if they win 56 to seven, of course, like I'm not gonna be mad walking out, but it just feels like there's a nothing to gain, everything to lose thing. The biggest thing I want to see is no one to get hurt. Like, Jaylen. like especially someone important, Jalen, yeah. he's been dealing with stuff. Like I don't, that's the one thing, or if they just struggle all night, because that would just feel like a letdown, but I'm yeah. kind of viewing it as a preseason game. Let's get in, let's get out, let's get that one and oh, and let's, let's get, move on to Illinois. Yeah. I just, I really don't want a... I don't see this happening, but I really don't want like a 14 10 game or for even like 14 7. Like, I want the offense to look good. I want it to be fun. I want there to be a little bit of momentum. Like, I'm mad. Even if we see, I disagree. I think if we went out and won 56 to 7, we're going to be saying, oh my God, Koto Nikki, Heisman's winning the, or Jalen's winning the Heisman. Like, that's how we are. We're idiots. We will take way too much out of so- this game. Yeah, but ahead. would wouldn't you move on? Would be like, because Illinois, this Illinois game week two, I feel like is one of the bigger non-con like week two games we've had in a while. We've been looking forward to that game for so long. Is it not just 
cool, we won. Now it's let's move on. We have a real game coming up at home. It's going to be awesome. We've been talking about it since the schedule came out. Yeah, I just I don't know how long I'll be hung up on it. But I get your point. Like, I guarantee what's going to happen is they'll win sixty three to fourteen, <laughs> and all three of us are going to be tweeting like, "Look at Jalen's Heisman odds." Okay, you they're like forty to one to go to the conference championship game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't I'm kinda interested to see the spread, honestly. I know some analytical sites have had around twenty to twenty four. You know me, I'm a gambler. I've been checking like every app all all day because usually it comes out at least game week. I haven't seen it yet. Um but yeah, obviously <clears throat> last year they, they kinda held back offensively against Tennessee Tech, but I don't think Missouri State is obvious is going to be anywhere near that type of level. I mean, we we've all had our takes on Tennessee Tech after that after the game last year, but Missouri State's a team that um, they went into Fayetteville, Arkansas last year, and they were up 27, 27 17 at Arkansas. So I want to hear that. Don't love that. No. Arkansas obviously a good team with a bunch of NFL talent. Um, they ended up scoring like 21 in the fourth, I think, and one by like 10. But yeah, they were down two scores in the fourth. I don't know. I saw a tweet, something about uh, them losing their quarterback and someone else. I know, yeah, they won 38 27. Nick said, Nick, I don't know if you know who they lost, but I think they lost a quarterback or something before the season. So I, re- I don't know what to expect from Missouri State's side, but obviously expect KU to be prepared. Um, Lance Leipold said today, JD's the starter. There was really no question there, but obviously there was injury concerns. So, yeah, I'm obviously I'm more excited to watch the defense. I think we know what we're getting in the offense. I want to see how the defensive line looks, how we look in the trenches against a team that's obviously more, that's obviously less talented than us. Yeah, and I think I would love to just come out, have an electric first quarter, get up 21-0, and then even see a scenario maybe where uh, Jalen doesn't have to play like an entire second half or much past the third quarter. Let Bean get some reps and let Jalen just – I just want to know Jalen's healthy and good for Illinois because like A.B. said, this is – this that Illinois game is a massive game that will impact – I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like the swing or, or like it's going to dictate – Season this, defining. I tell yeah, you. yeah, that's the word. I'm I think it could make or break. Yeah, it, so I want Jalen to be healthy, uh, but yeah, we'll see. It Obviously, I'm not going to take anything too crazy or telling my my brain that's smart right now to not take, even if we play bad, don't panic. If we play good, don't overre- S- or, or overreact, but we'll probably do either one, whatever happens. But yeah. it all comes down to Illinois. That's going to be the game. That's the game that I just want to make sure we are healthy um, but it would be fun to just absolutely pump somebody week one like we did last year. So, um, okay, let's take a quick break. We'll talk a little bit about home field here, and uh, then we'll hit a break, and we will be back for best case, worst case, and some bold predictions. But we got to talk home field. The uh, The guys are at it again. They, they had the drop. I mean, the circus font hoodies, it's not even a new one. I don't know where to do it, but – they always deliver. Um, we've never doubted them. We knew they would. The new drop was fantastic. I hope you got your stuff. Hope you made your orders. Um, you know about it, but I'm going to still read the things you need to know about home home field. They got unique designs. Uh, they dive into the archives and history of each school, which actually is very impressive. Like to the amount of schools they cover, the amount of schools they have, to the ways they know, like. They connect with fan bases and know what fan bases want is pretty awesome. Uh, we love them. I've never had a bad thing to say about anything I've gotten from Home Field. Uh, check them out, homefieldapparel.com. They've got a wide selection. We always joke that they just had a new college that came out where I was like, oh, wow, I might buy their stuff. Like, I'll you'll buy Grambling State gear if they come out with Grambling State. They might already have had, but uh, – Get your hoodies. Go Grambling. Hoodie season's coming up. I've got my hoodie. I have another one on the way. Um, it's home field. Not much more needs to be said. Go check them out. Homefieldapparel.com. Uh, we appreciate their support, and uh, you're crazy if you haven't bought anything yet. So shout out home field, and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. 
Just search KC Sports Network. So, mm-hmm. best case, worst case, bold predictions. I'm, I'm a little scared to do this because best case will get me fired up. I'll be so excited. Worst case will have me talking myself into those scenarios. And bold predictions is just fun. Where do you guys want to start? Best case. Really? You want Absolutely. to end kind of a negative note? No, because we'll end on a bold note with our predictions. People will forget what we say in the middle. And as we lose all 12 games, just kidding. That will not be my prediction. But, okay, let's start best case. Uh, AB, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. I think best case is 10-2. and two. I may have said it on here before. And I, again, best case is not a prediction. I'm assuming health all the way through, progression all the way through from what we've seen. The schedule, it kind of hit me today. It's not that bad. Um, I think there's one game that I would be surprised if we won. There's also, like, every other game I wouldn't be surprised if we lost. So, like, it's really going to be a toss-up. But TCU last year, they every one of their games was a one-possession game that they snuck out at the end. Obviously, that's random, a little bit fluky. If we go 10-2, and two, it's probably going to be a little fluky with a lot of good luck. But I don't – like, I can picture that happening in a way where they're 10-2, and two, they lose at Texas, and they lose at Oklahoma State or something, or K-State at home, or – I one of those tough games that we all know about. I don't want to go through the whole schedule. But I, it's not impossible, and it may sound outrageous, but again, we're talking absolute best-case scenario, and I think that's kind of where our ceiling is. And that, and I think if we go 10-2, and two, we're playing in Arlington in first week of December. So yeah, are there two game? I guess you kind of said at Oklahoma State, K-State, but like in that best-case scenario, because that's what I'm – like you said, the schedule is – it's not – crazy hard but it's also not easy like you said, any game we could lose outside of hopefully uh opening night but what are the two where you're just like okay even if we bring it Jalen brings his a game total Nicky's in his bag everything's going right I don't see how we beat that team like who are those two games to you really there's only one and it's at Texas but even that one I could talk myself into now because it's the week before Red River, so it's going to be could be a little letdown spot. They're playing little. I knew you'd like that. I know, absolutely love it. But I mean, other than that, our road games. Cincinnati's going to be average to below average. Iowa State, they don't have any players because they're all addicted to gambling. Fifteen bucks. Uh, Oklahoma State, sure, that's fine, but certainly winnable. Yeah. And other than that, our only other road conference game is at Texas. So like. If we're, you know, the crowd is as juiced as it was last year, there aren't a lot of home games that I'd be shocked if we won. I'm not going to say we win all of them. But, I mean, go through the home schedule. Which game would you be surprised if we won? K-State, I I mean, K-State, sure, because it never happens. But we could talk ourselves into that. Like, I'm not going to yet, but none of us would be surprised if this was the year it happened. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's why I wanted you to kind of go through that because... So maybe it isn't 10-2. and Maybe it's 11-1. and (laughs) See, outside of, yeah, like you said, outside of playing in Austin, which maybe we should all go to since, what, this will maybe be the last time we play there in Austin? A Tana's birthday. I'm sure she'd be pumped when I say, hey. Well, you're coming with you you've got How many more birthdays does Hannah have to celebrate <laughs> yeah. with you, Ryan? Um, <laughs> well, yeah. It's, real, it's conference realignment. Sorry, go ahead. No, outside of at Texas, I feel like the the tougher or some of the toughest teams in the league are in Lawrence. And obviously, I'm not I'm not saying we have the best home field advantage in the country, but you've seen KU on the road throughout the years. And obviously, playing in any Big 12 environment is going to be tough. So being at home with a sellout crowd, like an OU, if we're in Norman this year, chalking that as a loss, still probably am. Because they, they scared, that scared me last year. They went up-tempo, and we just couldn't adjust. Dylan Gabriel's back. They always have the same amount of talent. I was looking at look ahead a li- look at headlines today. It's OU minus seven in Lawrence, which isn't crazy. So one score line, um, K-State was minus six against us at home. We're due to at least compete with them, maybe, for the first time. And I guess since that game in Manhattan where we had the 80-yard oh. run that got called back on holding – should have won, but um, yeah, outside of that, like Tech's at home. Tech's supposed to be pretty good. I think they're like a three-point dog against Oregon coming up, which that tells me Tech should be pretty good. Um, UCF's supposed to be solid. That's at home. I was looking at BYU. Their over-under is five and a half wins, and the under's juice to like minus 150. 
So maybe BYU is not going to be that great. I know they got Keaton Slovis, the uh, USC QB transfer. So I think we have a, like you guys said, the Illinois game, I think maybe not make or break the season, but I think if you win that game, the fans start. Yeah, he went to, I guess he did USC, then Pitt, then now he's at um, UIU. But yeah, I think just because winning, winning and losing a football game can do crazy things to fans' minds. Like, you could lose to Illinois in triple overtime and everyone be like, damn it, like, we're not going to go bowling. Or you could win it time and everyone's like, damn, people could start saying big 12 championship type stuff. So I think if we get Illinois, we're going to end up being 3-0 and and then you have BYU. Um, it's, and like I said, they're under juice wins. I don't know how much that means, but it's at home. I would think we're favored if that's the line. Just yeah. win polls. So I guess that kind of was going to be my bold prediction, but I don't think it's crazy bold. I I have a starting five and zero, oh, so or four and zero. Oh, sorry, oh, I was going to say who? Yeah, I mean, Lost okay. Uh, because and so more on the Illinois BYU thing because yes, Illinois does feel like the make or break part of the season. But I'm sitting here looking at this. You beat Missouri State, and then, yeah, you lose to Illinois. And we will definitely melt down for a week about losing to Illinois. But then you go win at Nevada, and then if you beat BYU, you're still sitting at 3-1 and one going into Texas. I think everyone's happy with that, and I think that's a scenario that could absolutely happen. But it'll just be that week span where you got to make sure losing to Illinois does not compound into losing at Nevada which who knows where you go from there. I don't think that would happen, but yeah, I think start three and one, and this is going to be an amazing, like, I think we can get to six wins if we start three and one. Uh, but I mean, how, how do you guys, what do you think the percentages are? We start for now? Cause obviously Illinois is going to be a tough one. I could see that game kind of being a pick. I keep bringing up Vegas win totals, but it's the only way I can really look at these teams because I don't know shit about Illinois besides they lost a ton of talent to the league. Um, but they're at six, I think their over under is either six or six and a half. So I would guess they're kind of near our level and it's at home. So I would guess it's a pick. Um, they have a young QB. I think they have a sophomore QB that's going to be starting. Okay. Yeah. Nick just said transfer QB from Ole Miss will be starting Luke Altmyer. Um, so yeah, but it'll be in Lawrence, so I'm not going to gift wrap us that win, but yeah, I, I, as a homer, I personally would take KU week two at the booth against Illinois. Yeah. I think, I don't know what odds are would be to win start four. No, obviously it would be not great, but I think there's also a chance we're favored in all those games. Like if you think we'll be favored against BYU, then I think we will. I think Illinois may end up being a pick em, and obviously it depends on how week one goes for everybody, but it's kind of crazy. that I love the way some people hate the schedule, some people love the schedule, but what I love about it is I think the first four games of the season are about as fun of a start as you could have if you're looking to build momentum. Like, to get Illinois, who's a big enough name program, but not terrifying program either is perfect because if you beat them you spin it as oh we beat a big 10 team if you lose to them you get to say ah well it's illinois stuff <laughs> like i don't know byu being the first big 12 game i think is great uh so i love the way the schedule starts but yeah it's gonna be that middle part and really probably the final four games of the season may be what gets us to a bowl game or not how we perform in those B turn, what is your best case scenario? Or A B, do you have any thoughts on what we just said? Uh no, but I, I semi disagree. I don't know how excited I'd be about three and one because this is going back a little bit. Because I think then the kind of starts to tumble like a snowball a little bit. You lose to Texas three and two, then you're in the meet of Big Twelve play, and it's a lot of those toss up games we were talking about. Well, then they just might start going the wrong way because the vibes aren't as high, the juju isn't as good. That's just me being in my head. Um, sure. But I don't know. That was the only thing that really. What if you? But lose again, like I'm not going to be pissed off that we're three and one no, with sure. a road non-con win, a winning is Illinois or BYU before. Like, it's nice, but it's not like I think it could still go south if we're three and one. Because like for me too, at the same time, I say four and zero, oh, but it's hard for me to just give us. Illinois and BYU like mm -hmm. we can 
we really could lose both. I'm not saying we're gonna, but I would, if I had to guess, I would guess both those games are tight spreads um, before the game. But yeah, if we lose like a last second, like Illinois gets the ball late, they go kick a game winning field goal and beat us. And I told you we're still going to end up starting three and one. I feel like obviously we'd take it at that point. But mm -hmm. yeah, if, if best case, I think personally, it, it sounds crazy saying it, obviously, but it has to be Big 12 championship, right? Because I'm not, I'm not really sure what else you would say. I mean, last year they go six and six, make a bowl game, had a chance to win that bowl game. But what would you say outside of Big 12 championship for best case? Would you say like Six. eight and four? That's what I I wrote down eight and four, and I guess maybe that's probably you guys are probably more right if you're just talking a best case scenario. So a best case scenario probably means when you play K State, they have a player that's hurt, and they're somebody's hurt or they're they're in all sorts of trouble somehow. A star player's out, and you win that game. And then a best case is also uh, you upset Texas at Texas. Like yeah. That certainly, if that all that happens, yeah, Big Twelve is Big Twelve championship. Certainly, a best case scenario. I guess I tried to be a little more. I guess the way I looked at it is, I want to do a best case that I truly believed could happen. Yeah. And what I did, I said eight and four because I truly can see a route to that being a four and zero oh start. Yeah, and it, B turns got it written on the board back there. Eight and four, a four and zero oh start. Um, and a B real quick on your thing about how you could really start to see it tumble if we, if we start three and one, but I think four and oh, you could still see it tumble as For you sure. said with the schedule, everything is like UCF. We could beat UCF, but also we could lose 21 seven to UCF. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. We score seven points in a game this year. I'll be, uh, I know I'll be a podcast like you want to listen to. I know nothing about UCF that like uh, this year, but they're thirty nine point favorites this week against Kent State. I know they have. I mean, Malzahn's their coach, John yeah. Rice Pumley, Reese Pumley, or whatever. Yeah, he's their yeah. quarterback. Um, so yeah, they'll be good. But yeah, that one's in Lawrence too. So what if you go? You start four and zero. You go down to Austin. Never going to say we're going to beat them. I know the look headlines eighteen there, but you Ooh. compete. You compete with them which we have in Austin, weirdly. And that's kind of – I was going to bring that up, A.B. I didn't know if you saw that yet, that they play OU the week after. I had a feeling you'd like that. But mm -hmm. they're definitely I, – I would say they're not going to take KU likely just after kind of our history the last five or so years. Almost beating them there, beating them there. We beat them in Lawrence one year. So – oh, and they kind of have national title aspirations this year. Vegas loves them. But I know, it's crazy. More on that later. Yeah, but – you go down there, compete, and then you come home against UCF, which is that homecoming game or what's our homecoming game? Is it OU? I don't know, but it's five and one. Yeah. If you start five and one, I mean, yeah, and like you said, you start four and zero, oh, it could still tumble. Last year, you go, you start five and zero, oh, and you win one game the rest of the year. So the yeah. league's just really good. I just I think we can compete, but those games that we can compete in, we obviously can lose a tight one late at the same time. So here's my route. To eight, I think it's you start four and zero. Oh, we, I mean, if you want eight wins, you gotta start four and zero. Oh. You lose to Texas. You can even lose to UCF, I think. But you win. I guess basically how I look at it is you break it down into segments of the season. You start four and zero, oh, and then BYU, Texas, uh, BYU, was sorry, four. BYU, yeah. B Texas, UCF, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. You just gotta go win. Two of those, which I think UCF, we just said you do. And here's my – I'm just going to skip right ahead. Sorry. We've now blown two of our bold predictions. Yeah, my like bold prediction is we beat Oklahoma because coming off a of bye week, Lance Leipold, the staff, they get a, in a week to cook. Andy gets a week to cook. Jalen going to be refreshed, good to go. And who knows? Like at that point, let's let's say we're doing my scenario where we're eight and four. That puts us at at that point we would be with a win over UCF, you're five and and then at Oklahoma State, you assume you lose. You're five and two. You get a bye week. You win at a you beat Oklahoma at home, homecoming game. Um you're six and two now. And then you've got at Iowa State, who, as A B said, grossly addicted to gambling. Um, Texas Tech at home, 
I know they're, you know, Texas Tech's looking decent, but you can't tell me you'd be shocked if KU won that game. Kansas State at Cincinnati. Like, you got to go get two of those four. So, like, what you're telling me, though, is 10 and 2 is possible because those four final four games are all winnable. I guess, yeah, you're right. 10 and, and 2 probably is. Yeah. As you talk through it, three, like, four, you don't have to go 4 and 0 to start. Like, 3 and 1, there's still some breathing room. I do want to say one thing about that Oklahoma game. I know we mentioned it with the Texas one, how we play Texas the week before Red River. We play Oklahoma a week before Bedlam. Uh, another maybe sleepy spot for him. So just another uh, – that was also one of my bold predictions. I've got a few. That, uh, I'd say you would Oklahoma. Beat Oklahoma, dude. And I yeah. think Venables is not good. <laughs> and I see us beating them and that just being like the end of the – like not the- That's the end of Oklahoma in the Big 12. Imagine the fans and the shit that they would talk Ooh. if they walked off the field. Venables is not going to the SEC – with a Fair lot and like no offense to like this KU is no longer the joke we have always been but like it still has this feeling of like you lost to Kansas you're OU you can't lose to Kansas if they lose to Kansas Venables is done he ain't making it to the SEC God so it just I have the he's out on Venables after year one absolutely they were terrible last year if they're uh, if they're average again this year though there's no way they're going to the SEC with him as head coach. Exactly. They've got to go they, to that conference with the bang. They will go make a splash of a hire. Less miles, probably. Just kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my, yeah, Bob I think Stoops. <laughs> maybe hey. Bill Snyder route. I think uh, eight and four is like legitimately. Now, there's so many things that if somebody wanted to make us look really stupid, could clip all these things out of context. Sure, fire these up on wait. socials, which is fine. But I've got a, I've got a problem with your best case scenario, Ryan. Mm-hmm. You're just talking yourself into it, like that's what you think's going to happen. I don't. No, I don't. I don't think we're going to start. I really don't think we're going to start four and zero. Oh. I think we're going to start three and one, and I'm going to be happy with that. And I probably don't think we are going to beat UCF. I don't think we're probably going to be. I think. If you want to talk our real predictions or save that till the very end, we can, but um, I don't think we're going to win any games. See, that's that's kind of my thing with KU football is that I feel like our fans don't want to talk themselves into any sort of crazy expectations because of what we've seen. So, like last night, I was tweeting something about KU and someone asked me, what's your win prediction? And I'm sitting there in my head like, I can't say better than 7-5 and five, or I'm going to get shit on. I just yeah. can't say better at seven and five. So I feel like it's just the KU football nightmare we've experienced since Mangino left, and we don't want to get our hopes up at all. But is our offense not, I mean, maybe as good as any offense, at least in the league? See, not, I mean, I, not this, Texas. Is a, this is a pure example of why you're spot on right now, Braden. Every time you say something good about KU or something that could happen, Ryan's a giggle factory, and he can't stop <laughs> chuckling to himself. I get there's it. There's no... Happen. Because he might, he might be right. He ran very well. Oh, I know. Right, but like to your point about KU fans not thinking that they are able to have expectations for this team, it's like happening right in front of our eyes. Like, but uh, so I get where you're coming from because I even sound crazy because I said ten and two, and then I went through it. I could say the same thing about eleven and one. Like we're like taking ourselves back because we've seen this for the last fifteen years, and it's just hell. But. What does that have to do with anything that's going to happen on the field this upcoming season? The thing I keep going back to and why, I mean, we knew this would happen when we did a best case segment is we would talk ourselves into that being (laughs) real. But like, I just keep going back to this. I've said this on this pod before. We return more players than anybody. And if you've watched college sports your entire life, teams that return college players, players basketball football it doesn't matter if you return guys especially in key positions like quarterback running back wide receiver 91 percent total production returning the math says all the maths all the things you've ever seen in your life about college sports we will be a really good football team but i want to jump through my screen and tear your face off no i know like everything you're saying is like the best case is a fucking i know championship (laughs) and then you're like seven and five that's the I know. best they can do. The best no. they can do. I said eight and four. Is it bull? That's where I you're said, at. I said eight and four. I said eight and four. But my point That's is, it. my point is, it's still that like, I don't want to create a 
unfair expectation for myself, let alone the team. I feel like aiming forward would be an expectation. No, it is. Best place, like best. If everything goes perfect to form, I I promise you, if if Jalen is, if Jalen plays twelve games, if everything keeps progressing like we've said and goes perfect to plan, I promise you they're going to win more than eight games, Ryan. I promise you that. Yeah. Okay. So we're back to we maybe looked at best case a little different. Uh, but yeah, I mean, sure. I'm it not have to be best case. It, honestly, if, Jay, if everyone stays healthy, I think they're like, I, okay. If everyone's healthy, I will promise you this. I promise they win eight more or more than eight games. If everyone stays healthy, all the key players, <laughs> See, all, the, all the all conference teams, I, I don't think that's a real, like, I think that's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> and that's not me being a bad fan. It's just like, it's not, but say it out loud, and I've been hearing this, and I've been on your side for a while, because when the preseason All Big 12 teams came out, everyone's like, you saw, saw it from Scott Wildcat. A lot of my friends were saying, my brother said, you have the first team All Big 12 quarterback and offensive player of the year and running back, player on defense, offensive lineman, and a coach that we think is, what, top three in the conference? If yeah. those things become a reality... Eight and four is not the ceiling of this team. Like, I can't, I just don't know what else to tell you. Like, you have the best quarterback in the conference, top two coach. Normally, that's what wins ball games. And it's I not mean, like where it's, it's not like a conference that's full of, it's not like the SEC where you could be a really good team and finish seven and five. There are teams in the Big 12 that just, they're not going to physically overwhelm us like we've seen in the past. It's not, we don't have a top five playoff bound Oklahoma. I know everyone loves Texas in their top 10. We see this every single year with Texas. They're not going to go to the playoff. They're probably not going to play in the Big 12 championship game. We just, I don't know. I'm getting fired up because I'm talking to myself. And you're right. The one thing I do agree with you on so far is we are absolutely talking ourselves into things that are probably unrealistic. And I'm expecting KU to be in Arlington now. But I'm just saying, like, open yourself up a little bit to some fun. Best case is not eight and four. I. Uh- yeah, I mean, I mean, Nick wants us to hit a break really bad, so let's hit a break. <laughs> we'll come back. We'll, we'll cool finish down. this. We'll, we'll finish this down. argument. We'll let AB, uh, yeah, cool down a little bit. But <laughs> we'll be back. I love this. This is great. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. Okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was just like, if we finished eight and four regular season, like Ryan, would you be like shocked, like out of this world, excited if we finished eight and four? Like, yes. holy shit, what a year! Yes. I just, I don't know. We've seen this program go twelve and one recently. I'm not saying it's going to happen again, but like fifteen years ago, right? But if we run a podcast in 2006 and I said best case scenario was twelve and one in an Orange Bowl, you'd have cut my penis off, dude. Like, so I just don't say anything happened. I've never been gaslit more in my life. I just said we'd go eight and four, and then I talked about how we might do it, and you're like, so disrespectful. Like, that's not what I meant. No, I just meant like if that's your dream, like I'm in other aspects of life, like in golf, your dream is not to shoot one under par. Your dream is not to shoot a 68. <laughs> like if you go out there and shoot a 62, if everything's right, and you're just darts every Yeah, and that's where we're that's at round of your life. There's a difference to me is, and this probably just sounds stupid. Now we're just some no, think whatever you want to call it. Best case scenario is a little different to me than like out of this world, like fairy tale movie type season. I guess mm-hmm. is what I would say. I'm just trying to think of the most real, like, real, exi- like realistic way. Wow, my brain just short circuited there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. And I'm not like as you guys laid out ten and two. I'm not saying it's not the best case scenario. It absolutely is. Like you said, the Big 12 does not have outside of Texas. And to us, Texas is kind of like a joke because we we beat them and we never get like Texas. Well, I shouldn't say that, but Texas is never like that terrifying to us just because of history. But uh, yeah, it's just what tell me this. What do you think is more like eight, eight wins or four wins. Hey. 
the fact that you didn't fire eight no, right away no, tells no, no, me no. that best case being 10 is kind of crazy. Like, no, it's it, well, because the thing, it's just like, a, like that's yes. a very different question, though, because now you're asking for a prediction and that's like, <laughs> okay, well, do I think Jalen's going to be healthy all year? No. Do I think that the defense is going to be like vastly improved and be like fucking awesome? We'll see. Like, those would be predictions. But best case, if everyone stay healthy, yes, winning eight is obviously more like possible than four. Yeah. I mean, it is, I think our, it's up to six and a half, right? I don't know. Wins? I, I saw plus 105 today over six and a half. So I'm not saying Vegas is going to be right, but I would, I would lean more towards eight than four, just obviously because I'm a homer, but yeah. we're starting four and no. We got to win at least a couple. Rest but of the I year. think, the four route. Okay, so, and by the way, my worst case, so I think we're going to be way off because my worst case is not even, like, I don't even think four is on my radar either. So we can get into worst case if you want to. I just wanted to ask you before we do that, because I feel like we, me and AB have answered this, but what are your loss, what are your, like, games you absolutely think we're losing besides at Texas? Because I feel like you always have at least a couple because you keep it pretty realistic. Well, I... Uh, well... I think at Oklahoma State, we're for sure losing. That's the one that I can't even get myself to. Just because of last year, we got lucky with how banged up they were. It feels like they'll come out absolutely swinging. I don't think, like, I am I don't know which one it's going to be, but I think we're going to lose either Illinois or BYU. So there's three. And I think at Texas, and then I made my bold prediction we beat OU, but like we probably are going to lose to OU. So like those are the games where I'm like, okay, those are for sure. Now, I really want to say we're going to beat K State, but you can't just confidently say that. I think if there's a year it's going to happen, it would be a team that returns as much as we do and a team that really, I mean, we played horrible last year in Manhattan and really, I mean, every someone had the score. Yeah, we somewhat were in that game, and it took us just basically handing them points in that first half. So that's uh, why I don't I don't see any gripes on the schedule. I don't know if you guys have any or what makes people think it's so hard, but I think the best teams in the league, besides a team that I think we'd lose to at home or there in Texas, are all at home. OU, but, A State, yeah. UCF, Texas Tech. Um, Oklahoma State will be solid. I really wish we had a better grasp on the Big 12. It's just so hard to keep up. I know, I think, Nick, you can drop in, but Alan Bowman, the starting QB, I believe, played at Tech. I think he transferred to Michigan. Yeah, Alan Bowman, I don't know. I mean, he was okay. Yeah, he's been in college forever, but I don't know I don't know how good Oklahoma State's going to be. I mean, Gundy's been good forever. They usually have a good defense, but just trying to think of the games we'll for sure lose. I think... Tech and K State at home, I think definitely gonna lose one of those games, maybe both. But yeah, I mean, you got to stay at Texas for sure. And then, oh, you scares me. I know it's at home, but man, the Sting's whole offense to our defense last year is just yeah, hell yeah. Okay, I didn't even realize the time. We've got to get going here, but uh, okay, That's- let's hear wor- worst case. A B, I want to hear what your worst case. Is. We haven't even done bold. Predictions. Everyone gets hurt, 3-9, and 2-10. and ten. The typical 2010s, early 2020s Kansas football Jayhawks. Um, and again, I don't think that's going to happen. Lance, but Just kidding. I'm not going to get as deep as Lance that. will not be in trouble, no. No, I was going to say, does Lance like hop at the first job offer uh-huh. he gets this offseason if that happens? But I'm blind to think, but no, we don't need to get yeah. yeah. What about that's you? That's not as fun to go crazy about over as the fun. Yeah, one. which is good. I'm glad we saved this for the final 10 minutes. That was a good five minutes. That was a good call <laughs> by you. Uh, B turn. What was yours? Yeah, I mean, I guess the injury thing, and I was gonna say not going bowling, but obviously you win five games. I just I want to take a leap from last year, from for all with all the guys we have returning, like Nick said, ninety one percent of production. I want to take at least a leap or stay at that same level. I think you get a bunch of injuries, um, you get blown out a bunch of weeks, don't make a bowl game, maybe win three or four games, you start losing recruits. Obviously, in the back of our mind, you'd start asking about the coaching staff potentially taking other jobs or whatever. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but yeah, I think we're talking worst case. So yeah, I think pretty much what AB said. I was going to say not bowling, but yeah, 
I my worst case that I wrote down originally was five and seven, but as we started talking more, but how's that any different than yours? You said not going bowling. Uh, Best now, case is eight and four. Worst case is yeah, I, that's a tiny, saying. tiny, tiny that's window. What, I know. Dude. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to be far more realistic. I think so. I I think I. Uh, 12 and 0. It's just, yeah, I mean, obviously, best case, if we're going to be really technical about it, is 12 and 0, and we win every game by 100 points. Like, I wanted to bring some sort of realistic thoughts to it, and not saying, again, AB, you kind of talked me into 10 and 2, but like, Big 12 championship was yours, B turn, and then you say not going bowling. That's very different, I feel like. Or, I mean, that basically means you think we're for sure going to go bowling. 100%. Okay, so that brings me to... AB, do you have a bold prediction? Me and Beecher kind of spoiled ours. Mine was beating OU. Fresh I've fun. got I've got one that involves a KU game and one that involves the Big 12. Uh, the Big 12, it's stupid. Oklahoma State is going to be in Arlington in early December. The schedule is so soft, it's not even funny. We don't have to talk about that. We'll get to that later. <laughs> KU Texas, sneaky, 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 sneaky is going to be a top 15 matchup in Austin. And if... I don't know if I want that to be my take. Actually, I'm changing it as we go. My bold prediction is KU's ranked higher than Texas when they go to Austin. I, Bama. I, because Bama, and you just never know. If KU starts out 4 now, looks hot. Two of their first four games on, like, national TV, pretty much standalone spots. Their second game's at 9.30 at night. There's not going to be many things going on then. And then Illinois is on a Friday night on ESPN, so... They start 4-0 and get hot. Like, they're not far from being ranked now. I could. It's going to be a little quicker than it was last year where we don't have to start out 4-0 just to see the poll. I think if we beat Illinois, we're probably ranked week three. Yeah, then you go in. 24, week three. Right. Then you win that game and you can get up to, like, I don't know, 16-17. Texas doesn't look awesome against whoever and then gets blown out by Bama. It's, I don't think that's insane thing. What are the odds that's game day in Austin? I thought about Probably have to too. beat Bama. It, well, my only concern would be if they do Texas OU the following week for game day. Like, I doubt they're going to do Texas back to back. But that massive so brand, I, yeah. there's nothing that gets me happier than talking about game day plans. And nobody's before. better at it than like looking at other opportunities for game day than you. Like, you're always just immediately like, well, nope, Texas. I've already looked. The week before. I've already looked. No dude. way. <laughs> because I wanted to make game day my bold prediction for KU Texas. You know how many ranked matchups there are week five in the whole country? You don't know. Yet. I love that you've done this research. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. None. Absolutely none. Oh. So, uh, yeah. It I think. Be, I think another little take that I could throw into best case is Devin Neal and Daniel Hydeshaw staying healthy the entire year. I think if those two are healthy all twelve games. Offense can be as dynamic as any in the country. I know that's Dude. crazy because you have your Ohio States, you have your USC's. I'm not saying we're going to have like the best offense in the country, but you saw what our offense was doing when those two were playing. I and forgot how good High Shot was. Yeah, he 44 carries, 262 yards, six a carry, um, and then Devin Neal averaged six over six a carry also, and High Shot five touchdowns in five games. But yeah, at West Virginia they were insane. At Houston they were unreal. Kind of cooled off a little bit against Iowa State, but their defense, that's another thing, is Iowa State, even if, I know Decker stinks, I'm sorry, but I know even if he stinks, I probably would have marked that as a loss. Just because Ames is tough. Could okay, not well, tell you the last time we've won there. Let's go ahead. This real quick as we wrap up, because you're kind of doing it, B-Turn. What like is truly your prediction? Don't go game by game, but maybe like, I mean, is it 7-5? and five? Is it six and six? And like, if it's seven, who are we beating that maybe we aren't? Yeah, I'm going to, I'll say seven and five just because, like I said, I can't get myself to say eight and four. And I don't know why that kind of upsets me. Should be a better fan. But I think I kind of agree with you with the uh, BYU Illinois thing. Like, it's tough to just say we're going to win both because, like I said, both, both spreads will be points. close. Yeah. So I think three and one, obviously, you lose at Texas. Um, I think we lose to OU. That's three, and then we lose. We lose to Tech and at Oklahoma State. Those are my five, and I got us beating the old K State Wildcats finally. Okay. Or, or Tech, Tech or K State. I said we lose one. 
Yeah. Give us I think more. those, yeah. Uh, AB. I just want to start this out by saying how vastly disappointed I am with Braden after he wrote eight and four on his whiteboard behind him before the episode started and didn't even predict it to happen. It's upsetting. Uh, I will say eight and four, though, now that I look at the schedule. Start four now, <laughs> split the Oklahoma games, probably lose to Texas, and then go two and two in the final four games. That seems manageable. I'm not going to try and pick every single one, but yeah, I've talked myself into eight and four in the last 50 minutes and 48 seconds. I'm sorry, but if we beat Texas and start 5-0. and What's oh what's the UCF game going to be like in Lawrence? Will it collapse? Are we top 5 at that point? Top 10? Top Nick, 10, for sure. We'll, we'll cross that bridge. Top Depends 10. On, yeah, yeah, we don't have time to get into this. Oh, but man. I'll say, I think I'm going 7-5. and five. Um, Best case 8, though. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> it was just a simple, different... Uh, <laughs> Can't wait to listen back to this tomorrow. Way of thinking about it, I, I never thought I'd see a day where me being like, "Oh, ten and two seems a little crazy," was like a controversial <laughs> take about KU football. But no, I think I think you start three and one. You find a way to win one of those games in the middle with UCF, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and then you go win two of the last. Uh, right? Does that get us there? No, that doesn't get us there. Oh, God. mother. See, I'm more. I might be leading six and six. I don't know. I don't know because I really the way I look at it is like I said. I've got it three and one. You find a way to win one of UCF, uh, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and then you win two of the final four with K State, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Texas Tech. That gets you six, right? Yeah. Uh, All right. My official prediction: six and six. Sorry. Guess what? Guess what? We're going to a bowl game again for the second straight year. And I'm not going to be mad about it. I'm not going to apologize to anybody if we do go to the cheese it Bowl. Okay? All right. Guess that's all we got today. This is fun. It's fun to get fired up about KU football. Game especially game. when we're fired up about AB thinking 10 and 2 is like just happening. Game week. I didn't say that. I just picked 8 and 4. All right, well, that's it. We made good time. This was good. This was efficient. Um, good. That was good. Friday night, the Kansas football Jayhawks are here. Jalen Daniels <laughs> is a high, it's going to win the Heisman, and the Hawks are going to the Big 12 champ. There we go. Rock Chalk. Rock Chalk.